Sub Magazine. Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Cruisin Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on demand horror movies. Each week, my co host, Jeff Moore, Chris of Cleveland, Christopher G. Moore, and myself will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing From Black, streaming now on Shudder. Let me introduce the crew, starting off with the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent. Excellent. Excellent, I tell you. I believe you. <laughs> also joining us is award-winning filmmaker, Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm your demon, Doc. <laughs> doing well, you said. Yes, I'm <laughs> channeling my best demon voice. <laughs> doing the best voice so well. is calling you. Oh, yes. my gosh. Taco Bell is <laughs> making you go to the bathroom now. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! It's the diarrhea. The demon taco demon from Detroit. You right. will live um, an eternity in pain and suffering. <laughs> IBS forever. All right. Um. I we are going to review from Black. What we're going to do? We're going to start off giving our first impressions. Those first impressions will be spoiler free. And then we'll dive into a discussion where we'll get into a spoiler here and there. And then we'll wrap things up with a score one to five and our favorite scene. Uh, and we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others that we have on the site. And if you do, please hit the like, subscribe, and share with a friend buttons. They're easy and free to do. And each click will help us find more horror fans just like you. Uh, and before we get things started today... There's two more fans here. <laughs> yes. And um, before we get things started today, I don't know where we're we going with that, but uh, we... Two people uh, named more. Oh, two, there we go. Two oh, more fans. More fans, oh. yes. Oh, very good. <laughs> Boom. Wow, that just went right over my head. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, two fans geez. named okay. more. It tickled me. Um, <laughs> it tickled me too, but it was a little late. It was like a delayed tickle. Uh we, I just want to mention that we are celebrating our 10th anniversary doing uh, H&R, Decades of Horror, and, of course, Gruesome Magazine. Uh, the uh, celebration started with our review for, of uh, Evil Dead Rise, which is about a week or so back, and will conclude in February, uh, early March of 2024, um, as we go on our inaugural Gru Cruise um, which is going uh, to be a blast. All the uh, Gru crew together with our fans and having a, uh, what was it, three days of horror and fun in the sun. Exactly. Sounds like a good time to me. Fun for yeah, all. Baby. Drinks, drinks, and many drinks. All right. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, uh, check Crusoe Magazine or the link down below um, and see if you would like to join us on the uh, on the. Uh, for, Gru cruise. We could reenact a uh, ghost ship, or not? <laughs> Which one? The the early one from the eighties, or the horrible one? <laughs> the one where people cut in half. Well, hopefully yes. that won't happen. What? Jeff? <laughs> All nothing, right. Nothing. <laughs> it's like a... There's one from the forties too, and <laughs> well, <laughs> Jeff would know that. <laughs> Well, all right. Uh, let's let's get into things. Uh, from Black, uh, streaming on Shutter, beginning April 28, twenty twenty three. Synopsis is a recovering drug addict, desperate for closure and saddled by a crushing guilt after the di disappearance of her young son, is presented with a bizarre offer to learn the truth about what happened and set things right if she's willing to pay a terrifying price. How dark is she willing to go for a chance at redemption? Directed by uh, Thomas Martis and written by Jessup Flower and Thomas Martis. Uh, the cast includes Anna Camp, yay, John A I Ailes, we'll go with that, Jennifer LaFleur, Travis Hammer, and Richie Montgomery. Let's find out what our first impressions are, starting off with the one and only Christopher G. Moore. Um, I feel like I paid a horrible price by watching this. Ah! Um, uh, 
this this film fe- feels like a a theater piece, hmm, but not in a good way. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> this about eighty percent of this film is is just boredom. <laughs> It's it's just people having conversations. Uh, the camera will move in, the camera will move out. You know, people walk. I mean, if you take all the slow mo pieces in this film, the film would be like thirty minutes long. I mean, oh. and and they add all this like booming, beautiful music. It doesn't it doesn't really hit its stride until like we. I wouldn't even call it hit its stride. I think I think when the 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 evil force shows up. I, I mean, I like the design of that. Although it's more of a what I call Met Met Gala Hellraiser because <laughs> it's like it is, always, it is. always sashaying in the background, throwing its veil around. Um, but uh, that doesn't make up for the long, drawn out, cumbersome, boring, just painstakingly just. Ugh, dragging. I mean, uh, you know, we always talk about slow burns. This is just like, I don't even know. What, I, I, I feel like a rug burn from this. This is just like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, it's so monotonous and, and just, I don't know. I, it's, it's, and I, I don't like, I, I don't like the acting in this at all. I think the acting is, is not good in places and and that's when you're when it's a character piece like this is it just sucks all the energy out of it um and uh, as much as they try to make it all dramatic and stuff with the elements that are a part of the storyline i didn't really care it, i didn't i didn't see any kind of i didn't i didn't have any I didn't have any kind of care for the characters or their situations. It just felt. Yeah. It's just like, okay, we go to this long drawn out conversation, to this long drawn out conversation, to this long drawn out conversation, this long drawn out conversation with a demon, this, this <laughs> to regular drawn out conversation. And then we're going to go. And then on top of that, we're just going to, we're going to make, we're going to be all pretentious and have like little, like a million you know, chapters or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's, and, and, uh, I just, I, I just was looking forward to when is three. it say the end? <laughs> three. Um, <chapters>. three. <laughs> I did, well, I don't know. It felt like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the demons made me see more. Um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I hate, I feel like I'm not saying anything nice about it, but I, I will say the design of the creature and stuff is great. But that alone does not make up for all the mess you have to sit through. This is this was torture to me. Oh no! Oh no! Jeff Moore, the other Moore in the group. What was your first impression of from Black? Well, well, the first thing is don't listen to anything Christopher just said. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Oh my! I know. Uh, not boring <laughs> at all. I like this quite a bit, and I, I may have to raise my score after that uh, <laughs> i found it to be very atmospheric not boring at all and in fact it won't surprise you to learn i watched it twice oh no i'm not surprised at and all. wasn't bored either time i was fascinated uh however one of the reasons i watched it twice was i had major problems with the sound uh in at least for the screener and not having subtitles. So uh, there's an awful lot of whispering and croaky talking and demon voice stuff that was just really hard for me to pick up some of the time. Uh, So I watched it. That's why I watched it the second time. Uh, But I, but I, I enjoyed it. I did absolutely enjoy it. Uh, I think the acting is excellent myself. I totally bought into all these people and the, uh, the characters are, you know, I mean, there's the, there's basically four main characters, and uh, they're all broken in in some way or another, some worse than others. But I, I enjoyed the 
the interaction and the, uh, you know, especially the lead character, Cora, who's, I don't know how people survive what she has done. And so to me, that's, that turns this into a uh, much more dramatic and tragic. Uh, yeah, I like the demon too. I thought it was great. And this thing gave me the heebie-jeebies several times. And I think it was like a, a, or goosebumps. Uh, I think it's a combination of what was going on. And it's got that uh, kind of uh, score that's sort of um, formless and it increases. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, the score for the Black Coat's Daughter where there's a lot of buzzing and low, you know, sounds in the background that, that just make me tense as hell. So anyway, first impressions. First impression sounds like you liked it. All right. I, I, I enjoyed this too. It, it, I, I mainly because of the creature, the creature design is really good. Um, I also liked Ant camp in it or Anna camp. Um, I, I, this is a different turn for her. It's not her comedy kind of stuff. She's better at comedy, I will say that. But I did enjoy her in this, and I, I was like Jeff. I was I was captivated by the premise of her situation and being presented with this this uh, uh, this deal, this monkey's paw, if you will, about you know recapturing uh, or, re, or or having her son come back. You know, finding out all this stuff, and uh, and she's very broken and. Um, And there's some dynamics in here that work, and there's some that don't. I, the, the, with her sister, the police works, but the the deputy that's with her, not so much. She was a little strange, but sorry. But I uh, I enjoyed the the story of it and where it was going. I'm there. I do have some things that keep me from really, really liking this one, Jeff, as much as you. Uh, one thing is, is I'm not entirely sold on the structure of it you know the way it kind of has the um, flashbacks kind of story it 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 almost works but it there are parts of it that kind of threw me off um and the second part that i didn't like was what while it does resolve the primary storyline there is an important sub storyline that could also be considered the uh, prime storyline that it doesn't get resolved um and i'll save what all that is to our spoiler discussion because it is part of the spoilers and that i kept thinking like did did it actually end this movie <laughs> you know it, it it does end on a beat and a very strong beat and a very tragic beat but there's still an, this thread dangling and i want to know what happens here with this thread and um so i found that a little frustrating so to me it's it's uneven uh, but on the positive side, it's a film I think uh, people will enjoy. I think the cinematography is good. I didn't find it slow or boring. Um, and I and I like our leads. I like the guy that I, uh, who is the fellow. I want to say his name here. Uh, John Ailes, who plays the uh, Abel, who is um, bringing our our Cora into uh, very dark depths of desperation and um yeah I'm, I'm gonna leave it there let's get into the meat and find out where we disagree and see if i can get some answers chris so what's the what's the <laughs> plot that you found hidden all right so the or, dangling or the dangling thread was um and and it, so while cora is in the police station she is being haunted by you know the shadows and the and the and the and the um shadow lines on the on the walls they the, the creature is supposedly going to get her it's going to kill her and we leave her in the cell to be gotten for lack of a better word and the story ends on the other half of the on another beat that's related to what that's all about but we never really find out does cora get consumed does she get away does she you know i Cora's storyline, her own storyline is not resolved. 
I think it is. How is it? Because it's what's happening to her is what happened to the guy. Did she get sucked away? Because we didn't we didn't see it. He got it's sucked the, away because she fucked up the ceremony. Right. Yeah. But uh, she never got anybody else in the ceremony. And well, if he and and maybe, you know, who knows if he comes back if she, you know, this this demon wants a broken soul. Right? And so wants well, a vessel, but he didn't like the vessel right, that she right. offered him. Well, because it was unclean. It was right, filled right. full of drugs and stuff. And oh my God, what a nasty character. Oh, yeah. um, but but, but anyway, she was supposed uh, to do something, but what did she do? And I, I well, I, I took it one of two ways. So he says, you know, at the end, she says, uh, the last thing Cora says is, found you, Mr. Magoo. And then we flash back to seeing her sister in the house opening up the closet door. Well, that's not a flashback, uh, though, is it? No, no. It's not at the same time. time. We, that's we, happening we at the same time. Over to yeah. it. We cut okay. To it. Okay. Yeah, because there, because there is a flashback where she does almost the exact same thing. At the well, she tells uh, very weird. Well, that's part of the ceremony. No, the the <laughs> Bray, not Cora. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Um. So anyway, it, it's I. To me, one of two things happened. Either. Maybe she was offering up her sister. Or she went ahead and and took it. I don't know which it is. So it's a thing like I don't that. either, and I don't need to know. I just Well I, I, I think it's I think it's I, obvious. I think she took she allowed it because she realized her son was gonna be I brought yeah, back I, to life. Because that's what happened to the other guy. And I think I think it I think the demon transfers from people person to person. Um, I think that's why I think right. if that ceremony had went, it would have went into her and then she would have had to find someone else to trans. It's sort of like yeah. the, so who, the did ring go into? who did it go into? I think it went into the, the, the girl in prison. Cora. That's why that's, I think that's why her son showed up. Okay. I didn't get that. And I don't, and I don't, I don't well, and that's that. all, that's the only subject of, 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 it, of so. anything that I found interesting <laughs> or, or <laughs> of all of it. So. Well, I, 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 so I like the steps of the, the, and I think there were three, the steps of the ceremony. And uh, you know, actually it, there's four of them. I, I was wrong. I so apologize. It, it started off with her, you know, doing the floaty thing and, uh, and, actually and, there might and be getting five. into it. <laughs> Maybe there was 500. <laughs> I know. I'm not um, crazy. Well, I got <laughs> No, there is five. There is five. There's five. Okay. That's okay. what I thought. That's what I, a couple okay. were pretty short, but. All right. Um, well, tell us more, Jeff. Well, first <laughs> purification where he's got a washer with the salt and all that stuff. And then the quickening, which is when he puts a chain on her inside the salt circle. And uh, he keeps mumbling away in the background, reading the, the book. And she that's when she realizes it's all real because it, she feels it. Right. She, yeah, she, she does. She levitates. Yeah. Right. Starts, yeah. Um, and then the invitation, um, which is basically they were just telling them we're ready. You know, we seek you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then grief, which is where she has all the flashbacks of what happened with the boy. Right, mm -hmm. she she goes back and experiences that, and then the last one was parturition, which I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the hell that is. Just, I didn't look up the definition. I guess that's where she failed, right? So. Um, right, right, right. It, it, and that's when he says, uh, Abel says it's going to show itself, and it, remember it's a barter, not a gift, and then tells her like five times to stay in the circle. And the first thing she does when he freaks out and starts puking up bones is run out of the circle. Absolutely. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> going, oh, yeah. So Absolutely. anyway. I, that's the first thing I would do, too. So I don't I, I couldn't tell you in your was, circle. <laughs> is that what he was talking about when he said you can't follow some simple instructions? Or was it because she wouldn't eat and drink the stuff that he told him to, Abel told her to later on out in the... Yes. 
uh, all of those. So. <laughs> all of it. All of it. So uh, back to the uh, the first one, which was the quickening. I that's I was really getting into at that point when she did the levitation. I thought I thought the visuals were really striking, and a lot of times the visuals were striking. So what's really interesting for me is that. A lot of times we'll watch a film and the first act and the third act are really good. And then the second act will meander. And for me, it was kind of the opposite here. I the the I, I don't know if I like the third act as much as I like the entirety of the second act. Mm. I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> No, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I just, liked it. I, I, I think I think the only times I liked it is when the demon showed up. The rest of it was just boring conversations between people. Uh, and even the stupid thing, the table out in the middle of nowhere was just the, the guy was overacting like like he was in bad theater. It was. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I, I don't the whole know. time. I mean, I, yeah, and I'm glad I'm glad if, I'm glad you, you guys found by a demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. Well, you might overact too that, if it starts to well go that's that's a good way to to uh, disguise bad acting but um the oh my goodness i well again my my opinion but um yeah i just don't i know for some reason i just uh, i could see what they're going for you know and and they're but i think it to me it it it, it just seemed like like i don't know they, they 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 did stuff too much you know what i mean almost like they were like yeah we're doing this because this is how people do it and and just they i mean they just overuse so many filmmaking techniques that you use it to you utilize it to sort of sell stuff but when you over utilize it it's just excess and it's and it's and it's kind of wasteful and it kind of ruins the cinematic experience i think when it comes to telling a story because they just kept i mean they kept using the same filmmaking techniques over and over and over and over there'd be like if you're watching like uh uh, Jacob's ladder and they just use the, the flashy demon stuff all the time. You get bored. You just use it for specific moments. And this, this film just kept using things where that you pushing in slow, pushing out slow. I'm walking in slow motion. Um, the camera's moving away in slow motion. This is, you know, and it, they kept doing it so much. It, 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 it just, it just seemed like they didn't understand how, how to sort of like be able tell the story you know and then i mean granted i will say it's it's shot well it's got some beautiful uses of light with light pouring around in certain scenes but again a lot of it's just really low monotonous talking with not a lot of emotion where they're just like blah 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 okay let's go to this place blah 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 and it and it I, literally i was like Okay. And, and, and when the levitation thing, I was like, I don't feel anything here. And it just got more interesting when, when, when Met Gala Cinebite shows up <laughs> Met Gala and, Cinebite. and that was more interesting because at least there's something interesting happening more than just these boring characters having conversations, long drawn out conversations that, I mean, granted the film's only an hour and four, four <laughs> you could have whittled down some of those conversations and got just as much information from that. Uh, to me, that's just—I don't know. It just seemed very extraneous uh, to me. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. You, I'm glad you. I, I I couldn't watch this movie again, so I'm glad you could watch it twice and and still be enthralled by it. For me, it just—I didn't feel anything. It just again, it just got more. I, and again, just the design of that demon. If I'm going to say something positive, I'll say the music is great. Uh, like Jeff was talking about the music, I think the utilize of music, but it felt like I thought some photography was hot too. I felt like the music was for a different film because it was so good and then the the demon stuff i think the design of that demon was really cool especially when the close-ups and stuff with the look of it i mean it did feel very cinnabite cinnabite-ish um it had that yeah, weird yeah. bone helmet thingy looking yeah yeah and then, the, he, then really cool. of course he did a sachet with his little <laughs> twirl wow. of his his so, veil whenever you want <laughs> certainly could get away with it if he wanted to so I'm trying to think of how to say this. Well, first <laughs> off, well, first off, the long drawn out conversations. I I didn't hear a long drawn out conversation. I really didn't. 
and, I, and I'm trying to think back and try to figure out what the hell you're talking about. But I about every conversation. There wasn't very many long drawn out conversations. They were they all were drawn barely... out. I, I no, they weren't. It. They really the, were. The first the first forty minutes is just people having conver- long drawn out conversations. So and then then you then you then you flash you flash forward to the drawn out conversations in the prison, and then you flash back to these long conversations. I mean, there's literally there. She has so several the other conversations. Thing is, you as a filmmaker guy. talking about how filmmaking techniques that you thought were overused whereas as me as a viewer if i hadn't noticed any of that i'd have to say it worked well, you're I mean, looking at stuff that a, that the average person doesn't normally look at and i didn't have any problem with any of what you said so well i only look at that if it's not done to a certain level but but again that yeah maybe it's just more my eye as a filmmaker i'm sure people could probably say the same thing stuff about my films as well <laughs> uh but i don't know for some reason it just i i think it i think because i was so pulled i, w- I because i didn't have any kind of real interest in what was happening the, the the conversations then i then i start paying attention that's when i start paying attention to like the filmmaking aspects and i'm like wait a minute they're using they keep using that same shot over and over they keep using these slow motion techniques over and over and it yeah it just didn't it, i i just like okay i feel nothing and this is like i okay. can't even think of <laughs> I mean, no, I, 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 some of that was with the with the demon, but I just can't even think of. You know, Every time with the girl, they do it in slow motion when she's in the road. Ah, oh, I do remember. Well, her. she's up in, when she, when she, and then okay. when she's walking down the hallway. Now, wait a minute! Now wait a minute! She's watch she's you. I, fly, I, I uh, you, if you did a drinking a, game for every slow motion, you would be. Uh, okay. You have look, alcoholic. She's in a flashback where she's she's being revealed all this shift, and and she's supposed to be experiencing all this grief that just that just made sense to me that i mean that she's in an like an out-of-body transcendental spiritual whatever the you know it is yep, experience yep, yep. that those things would that that's the way it would be experienced especially if you wanted them to feel the full force of the grief mm. which especially is especially when it's 50 of the movie yeah said. all right all right. Well, what's what's interesting is that I think we all, all three of us, have a different experience. Well, and that's that. I, I, that's the, that's that's the beauty of uh, cinema. You know, it's, it's like we can all we can all look at things from different perspectives and and pull different things away. And so, uh, I'm sure probably more people are in your camp than in my camp. Um, or Anna and, uh, camp. Fine. All right. So let's uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and wrap things up with our score one to five and our favorite scene. Christopher, let us have. It. Um, I, again, to look at the positives, I'll say it's shot well, it's got some beautiful, uh, music. And I think the, the design of the demon, the design of that demon, I think is a standout. One of the cooler things I've seen in a little while. So I, and I think that just, I wish it had more screen time, to be honest. Um, I'll give it a, uh, I'll give it a three. A three. Okay. okay. That's I'll actually be nice better give it a, I'll be nice yeah. and give it a three because I still, even though I have issues with some of the storytelling and the acting and stuff, I think, I think when it, it it's still shot well. And I think the design of the demon itself, it, okay. the effects of that, I think is worthy of seeing just for that. Those and what's your scenes. favorite scene? Um, and and th- and this also comes down to the filmmaking. Um, again, I love the demon scenes. I think I think the scene when she when she runs out of that circle, and you and and you see the the background is kind of blurred out, and you see that hand come out of the mouth. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a well conceived scene where you didn't necessarily have, and with it being out of focus, it was all creepy looking. And I think that was such a well conceived shot. Things like that. I think again for me or the positives of this film and, and stand out that I wish there was more of that in the film. Right. And there's a shot of the demon there. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Exactly. There's the, uh, the, yeah. The, what'd you call it? Yeah, whatever it is. It's fine. <laughs> Jeff Moore. Met Gala cinema. cinema. Yeah, well, Jeff, what is your, uh, your score and your favorite scene? Uh, well, so we do agree on something because that would have been my favorite scene. Uh, mm. But I will I will go. go with another one. Um I'm giving this a 3.75. Oh wow. Um it does have some questions like I you know but 
I'm usually fine with the, uh, as a friend of mine says, content with the mystery. There are certain things in this I don't need to know. All I need to know is that's what happened. And there's huge unsaid things that I could imagine. Um, so, uh, so my favorite scene is going to be, uh, well, something in slow motion, of course. Uh, but... So many scenes. <laughs> Literally, when she's on the road. Yes. Okay. And the guy comes in. I think this is the order of what happened. The, the kid tries to run towards her. Out of the van, right? Yep. Out of the van. And then the, the, the van driver, the kidnapper, runs and grabs the kid. And then she's screaming and in the and I don't know if the van drives away or what, but in the background you see the the demon, demon. in what mm -hmm. I forget what did you call it. I liked I liked Met how what attracted my attention to that was the veil flowing. The veil, out. the Matt Gala yeah. Cenobite. Uh, I thought that was great. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure I would have noticed it. I might, have, you know, if I'm I'm not looking at that. I'm looking over here, and if there's no motion there, I might not have seen that. So I like that. Yeah. It um, gave me the. Creeps. The creeps. It was a creepy looking character. I will. I will give you that. I thought that was. It was. It was great. I. Get, I'm going to give this three and a half. So it's interesting. Uh, you know, a quarter. A, you know, a half here and a quarter there is the difference between all our scores. And it, well, I'm close to a less, four, but I. Less, but I didn't. I didn't raise it. Didn't raise didn't it. Raise it. No. But to listen to us talk, you would think it would be like. That know. happens all the time. <laughs> a, lot, a lot. A lot of. A lot of points. Um, so my favorite scene is uh, going to be. I like the levitation scene. I thought that really set the tone for the rest of the demon part of the story. Um, you know, it, the way she reacted to it, the way he reacted, the, the, the other guy, Abel, reacted to it, and the way it looked, I thought it was really well shot because we see it framed through the door, and it just really looked great. And, um, and that's when I that's when it piqued my attention. And, and from there I was actually, I was all in, I was listening to everything and watching everything. I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And that's what I was talking about with the, you know, the first act and last act um, the reversal on that. But anyway, that I'll go with that. Um, and I could go with like, anytime the demon shows up, I, there's one time when it's like right up in her face that I, that I really like yeah. too. And you can get a mm. good, good, I think you get a profile shot of it and it's like, rah, rah, rah. I thought her voice, the voice was really good too. The, or the, the, the pronunciation, you know, the way he said certain words was just yeah. like, boy, yeah, there was, he had a way of saying that that was just, that he yeah. drew out and really drilled into her. Yeah. Yeah, I always get confused about pronunciation or enunciation, but whatever it is, <laughs> it's definitely one or the other. Um, all right. Well, there you go. From Black, streaming now on Shutter. Check it out and let, you, let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. Decide for yourself. Who's right? Who's wrong? Yeah, don't listen to any of us. Go see. It let me let me put it this way: who you which you, who you agree with? It isn't who's right and who's wrong. It's... But it might be. All right, guys. Let's <laughs> Chris team <Rivera>. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher and Jeff, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Yes, sir. It's always fun talking to you guys. Uh, I, I you know I was trying to rival. Uh, Crystal and Christopher's uh, discussion last last week. I'm not sure. No, I'm not right. sure you can. There's no way you can. No way you can do that. All right. He was a little let's, bit heated. Let's, let's, let's just let's get out of here before we recreate, recreate and recapture that. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>